Hey, you're watching PopCast, the crowd-sponsored yo-yo show. My name is Dr. Popular. Uh, I am here with a special guest all the way from uh, Ohio. It is Mr. Steve Brown. Steve, how you doing? I am quarantined. Quarantined? How, how, long, <laughs> how long have y'all been quarantined where you are? Um, I, I'll be super honest. Uh, even when nothing weird is going on, I have a really hard time keeping track of time because I work from home normally. Uh, so the days and nights just sort of blend in together. I think at this point we are, our household at least is like two weeks. We're two weeks in at this point, something like that. We, we actually pulled the kids out of school two days before the schools closed because we were getting nervous about it and we decided, you know what, if they miss a couple of days of school and I'm just overreacting, it's really not going to matter in the long run. Let's just pull them out of school. So so where you are, is it shelter in place? Like, like is that the law or is this more just a self-quarantine? Yeah, uh, shelter in place. Our shelter in place order went into effect. Uh, let's see, what's today? Wednesday? It went into effect, I think, Monday. Like Monday, like Sunday night at midnight or something like that. Um, so we've, we've been under shelter in place order for a couple of days now. Um, and I mean, realistically, like Ohio, uh, amazingly enough, uh, was really one of the fastest responding states to all of this. Um, so, you know, we basically had like an unofficial shelter in place order, uh, handed down like, like pretty quickly. So the official shelter, order, it feels like was less to, it was less a matter of needing to curb behavior because everybody was was already kind of like taking that to heart and more a matter of them just needing to give like law enforcement a way to like better enforce some of the business aspects of it. Like, you know, telling GameStop like, hey, it's not for you guys to be selling dirty old N64 games, like maybe go home. <laughs> So uh, let's add a little more context here because I didn't do that at the beginning. It is uh, March 25th, uh, 2020, uh, in the year of COVID. Um, this is the uh, kind of beginning of uh, the, uh, the the pandemic uh, hitting hitting the U.S. So uh, Steve and I are, are both uh, experiencing work from home like everyone else is. But just in case you're watching this a year from now or whatever, uh, that's what's happening right now is sort of we're right at the beginning of uh, the world ending. Uh, so when you're when you're when you're eating chocolate hummus because it was the only thing you could find in the grocery store, <laughs> and you're watching this show, uh, that, that's some context. And uh, Steve is a uh, professional yo-yoer who is uh, a uh, the creator of uh, Counterweight Freehand 5A. Uh, he has uh, pioneered a bunch of other styles as well, and he's also a national trick innovator. Uh, and uh, you have a, you have a good world title. Oh, you're a, you're a, a yo-yo master, a national yo-yo master, right? Yeah. U S national yo-yo master over 40 world champion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, ra I've racked up a lot of, I, I, I got like a Donald F Duncan industry excellence award one year. Uh, I think I got like all of the national museum awards except best girl player and, uh sportsmanship award which i mean i'll never get the sportsmanship award i'm just too salty for that <laughs> those guys <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so you know actually um on the on the topic of of freehand um this year i was going to try to compete and contest again uh in the freehand division. oh cool yeah yeah that's not happening like that's not happening anywhere. <laughs> Good year. I guess I got an extra year. But, I mean, realistically, practice. I mean, with like all the contests basically being canceled this year, um, it, this is a great year to like, just, you know, hunker down and like really practice and like work at it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, everybody comes out of quarantine and the contests start happening. And then you just roll up with like this amazing, like hella tight, three minutes of just pure doom that nobody sees coming. Like this is exactly the right time to like hammer down something like that. So get on it. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm uh, trying to go downstairs to our garage. We're not allowed to leave the house unless it's essential. Uh, so I try to go downstairs to the garage and work on my uh, freestyle routine and work on b-boying. I'm trying to learn how to b-boy again. Um, but as we were saying before the show, I'm, I'm like 90% sure I got the Roni 
uh, and uh, b-boying for like uh, 60 seconds and I'm just winded <laughs> wow. even though even though I feel fine or whatever I just can't I can't breathe which maybe maybe that's the Roni or maybe it's because I'm a uh, 43 uh, trying to b-boy yeah I'm I'm finding that there's an awful lot of things where I'm like I'm either really ill or 43. And and at any given moment, I'm never sure which one it is that's preventing me from physically accomplishing whatever it is I'm trying to do. Uh, so uh, time keeps moving uh, and uh, the the freehand patent, the counterweight patent is coming up on mm-hmm. its expiration date. Uh, you like that little transition there, like time moving uh, freehand. It's like it's coming up in a month, right? Yeah. And I just remembered, I think I'm actually 44 I stopped paying attention like <laughs> after 40. I hit 40 and I was like, all right, well, I'll see you again at 50. And then just quit paying attention completely. I think I am 44. Yeah, so the counterweight patent, uh, that is coming up really soon here. I, uh, I don't remember exactly what. I've got a, I, I, I built a website, uh, 5A Yo Yo. Com. 5ayoyo.com with a countdown timer. So 33 uh, days. Yeah, yeah there it is. Let's see that again. 33 days, four hours, 47 minutes. Yeah. Now, I had, right now. I had heard that you had planned uh, a large party. Uh, you had the uh, the city you live in um, was getting ready to throw a huge parade. And uh, uh, that's yeah. been postponed uh, now. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but the the patent is still uh, happening. And we were talking about this earlier where where you felt maybe that there was some pressure on you to do something other than building the website. Like what's like all eyes are on Steve. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I, I mean, and I've been saying for years, you know, like I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this patent to finally expire so that we can really start to like push the style again and. Uh, you know, we'll start to get a ton of like innovation from like all these different companies and everything. And um, and I think a lot of people have been kind of hoping that I was going to like lead the charge on that. And the reality is that I am I'm an administrator now. You know, like <laughs> like that's my strength in yo-yoing at this point is like oh, getting things done, you know. And it's not, um, I don't feel like I have like the personality to like lead the charge on anything anymore. Like nobody's going to watch me play and be like, I want to be like that guy, you know, like I'm my, I'm so far past that at this point, you know, all the people that are like legitimately inspiring 5A players are, um, uh, much, much younger and have the time to put into it. So I've been kind of trying to think like, well, what? You know, as like the old guy administrator, like instead of, you know, me like, you know, dusting off the weights and like trying to, you know, like relearn a bunch of my old tricks and try and smooth things out again. You know, it's it's like like it would be foolish for me to try and and like lead the way on that level. So I've been thinking really, really hard about what to do, like how I can contribute from the vantage point of my new role in yo-yoing. And like my new place in in the industry and like what what does that look like now? And I think I've come up with something cool, although I can't actually spill the beans on it yet. Oh, cool. um, but I was talking a lot to uh, uh, Chris McCoolin, uh, Caribou Chris, and um, and I kind of laid out like, you know, I, what I felt like I wanted counterweight yo-yoing to look like moving forward and how I thought that as a company, Caribou Lodge could contribute to that. And he's really gung-ho on the idea. So, um, I mean, we're going to, we're going to, we get, he's got a bunch of design work that he's got to get done, but like, we've got a, we're going to get moving on it. And I think we're going to be able to announce soon ish kind of what the plan is. Um, but it's, uh, it's it's not as as boring as just like we're gonna release a counterweight yo yo you know what I mean like it's it's I wanted to do something that was really more a celebration of the style and a collaboration with as many people as possible. Um, so I've kind of started laying the groundwork for that and we're working on it and um, it's going to kind of dovetail into what 5ayoyo.com is going to be, which is essentially just an information hub. 
you know, um, it's not going to be like, you know, this is the place where Steve dictates from on high what counterweight yo-yoing should be. Oh, read the tablets. Um, you know, it's more going to be like, this is all the counterweight content that everybody else is creating. These are the tutorials that all these people have made, um, you know, and just sort of like a, a, a one stop spot to get like a crap ton of information about like what's going on and in, in counterweight yo-yoing. So I'm working on all of that and I feel really good about the idea that instead of, instead of me being like a figurehead for what 5A is going to look like moving forward, um, me just sort of being a, um, an administrator, like it's, it's, you know, I'm just here to to provide the framework and the platform for everyone else to shine. And I, I feel much better about about holding that role, I think, these days. It was hard initially for me to make that transition from being like the dude to being like the guy who presents the dude. <laughs> um, but like I, I definitely feel a lot better about it now. And I, I feel like I've really kind of like found a good spot for myself in yo-yoing. So just just to be clear uh you have no objections once this uh patent goes down you have no objections with people making counterweights and with the market getting flooded with, with new counterweights i am super excited about ev the idea of every single company out there having their own ideas their own take on counterweights uh i want everybody to release the floodgates um I, I will probably put a tip jar out on 5AYOYO.com. So oh, cool. if anybody wants to throw me a few bucks for all of the years of royalties that I didn't get from Duncan, because <laughs> uh, that patent did not turn out to be lucrative for me in the slightest. Um, but I mean, beyond that, like I, I want everybody to like run with it. I cannot wait to see like once it's like fully unleashed, like what everybody else's ideas are. And, you know, the uh, uh, oh, man, I got hang on, let me see if I can find it. I bumped into this dude at uh, so I bumped into this guy at Pacific Northwest Regionals and I bookmarked his Facebook profile because I knew I would forget his name. And sure enough, I've forgotten his name. Um, so somewhere I have a screen screenshot of his Facebook profile. So I'll remember it, but he gave me this 3d printed counterweight. Mm -hmm. That uh, makes total sense. I don't know if you can see this or Look not, that locks. but That's like, so cool. yeah, so you push and it pops out and then you rotate it and lock it. Yeah. So it is, this one's a little stiff. He gave me. brilliant little design um and uh you know one of the things that that i'm going to do is work with him on doing like you know a, a handful of really neat like exclusive counterweights um only available on 5a yo-yo he also did you know i'm pulling this it's a good thing i'm sitting at my desk right now because you now i have all this stuff handy every time you do that it's like you're reaching into my brain and and i just hear like nuts and bolts <laughs> clinging <laughs> So he did, uh, he did like a plastic transaxle counterweight. So the, the inside and outside spin independently. So it, act, it functions kind of like the bearing ones, but it's mm -hmm. just, it's all 3d printed plastic. So that was super neat. And then he made some of the space needle. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. That's cool. I mean, that is amazing. And he put mm -hmm. like the PNWR 2020 on it. And of course, who knew that this would become like the great relic of the last yo-yo contest of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> the last contest ever. Um, yeah. you know, I, 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 uh, bought my first yo-yo in the space needle. Uh, so I'll have to get one of those, uh, space needle, uh, counterweights. That would yeah. be bad. I will um, later on once I, I remember I will pull his profile up and I will introduce the two of you so that you can get in touch with him because his counterweights are super neat. He's a really nice dude, um, really like just really solid like CAD engineer, um, and the Space Needle counterweights are super rad. It's one of those things that it's like it's especially for you, you know, being a five A player and the Space Needle being the site of where you got into yo-yoing. Like that's a pretty perfect. Uh, if he doesn't have any left, I'll give you mine. Right on. Uh, speaking of the market getting flooded, uh, this is the pop art, uh, which is something I'm working on with uh, Jeremy, Mr. Yo-Yo, Mr. Yo-Yo Thrower. Yeah. Uh, from, uh, Jeremy, okay. Yeah. 
Uh, and yeah. this, this is his design for a freehand counterweight. Um, I have something similar that I'm still thinking about, like a heart shaped one. Um, but, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. this is, this is what we're going to be coming out with in 33 days and two minutes from now. <laughs> nice. That's uh, awesome. A very, responsive... yeah, I would say the only, the only thing that I would legitimately ask is that every company that releases a counterweight, send me one, please. Yeah. That's it. I just want one. I just want one for the collection. I just want to make sure that I've got one of every counterweight ever made. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. got a handful of like cool like bootleg ones. Like I've there was a there was some company in China that like was actually bootlegging free hands and with my head counterweights. Mm -hmm. So I've got like a bootleg counterweight of my own head from China, which was kind of amazing. That's pretty rad. Yeah. I, I was I was hoping. Uh, to get one of each beefcake yo-yo uh, and or one of each schmoove yo-yo, yo-yo uh, with a schmoove groove. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't that hasn't happened. I would have a lot of yo-yos this year, though. Uh, schmoove groups would. came back in a weird way through the, through the grail guys like, or ART. Does, yeah, does the... I think the creep kind of has that, doesn't it? I don't know the creep. Hmm. Is that a caribou yo-yo? Yeah, uh, kind of. It is a uh, like. <laughs> isn't it great that I have everything at arm's reach? Um, it is heaven sent. So mm -hmm. it's something that we. It was like kind of a, a, a sub brand that we did with uh, Alec Campbell. Mm -hmm. um, he wanted to kind of do like the marketing and everything like very very different than like normal caribou. Um, so he designed the yo-yo. We produced it, and then he did all of the promotion for it. So you look at this and you tell me, is that a smooth yeah. move? Yeah, I think it's a smooth groove. And, and okay, it's I'll, totally out there okay, for people to use. Then I'll send you one. Oh, word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send you one. Any, anybody else watching, remember to send Steve your counterweights and be your smooth groove yo-yos, especially ART because yeah. I don't have any of their, their yo-yos yet. Uh, but yeah. uh, so let's, Those let's are nice, move, too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's move on to uh, quarantine. Uh, work from home. How is that working for you right now? Uh, I mean, I, I, Jenny and I, my wife Jenny and I both work from home to begin with. So like that whole aspect of it is um, we're f really, really fortunate that like, like it has not changed anything at all for us. Um, obviously, like having to adjust to all the external forces that are happening has, you know, has caused a lot of shifts in our actual work. Um, but at least the whole routine and pattern and everything of working from home is, is really no different at all for us. So that's, that's super rad. Um, we're generally not used to doing it with all of the kids home. All the time. <laughs> so that has definitely been a little bit trickier to kind of deal with. Um, but, uh, by and large, like it hasn't, uh, you know, we've had to adjust our schedules a little bit to accommodate with, for the kids, but it hasn't really, uh, that aspect of things hasn't really impacted us. Cool. Uh, yeah, Chris, Christine and I, uh, my, my wife, uh, she works from home one day a week. I work from home two or three days a week, but when I work from home, it usually means I go to a coffee shop, uh, and we're, right. we're never both here all the time. And so, you know, uh, I am working from a crappy Ikea table. That's just big enough for my laptop, this super uncomfortable chair to like, you know, spend hours in, it's just killing me and, you know, hours, uh, upon days, upon weeks. So yeah. And yeah, I have to go downstairs to yo-yo. There's not much room in here. It's a 500 square foot apartment, uh, for two people. So yeah, it's tough. See, we've got, we have the luxury of that Ohio living where yeah. the same amount of dollars that you spend on that apartment, probably less probably gets less. us like a, uh, you know, 1600 square foot house. Yeah. Um, or two, uh, two, I don't know. We're probably, I don't even know. I don't It's again, it's one of those things that like, you don't even keep track of. Cause you're like, Oh, you know, it's got four bedrooms. Sure. That'll be enough. Like, you know, the, everything is just so much bigger in Ohio for the same dollars. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when you leave your house, you're in Ohio. <laughs> uh, so the, the world yo-yo contest was in Ohio last year. And, uh, yeah. I hope, I hope. Yeah. And you were the lead organizer of that event. Uh, yes. are you, are you yes. involved with worlds this year? 
So the way that we've been kind of doing things uh, with the IYYF is that every year, like the local, our, our main local person is the head organizer. And then all the rest of us kind of shift to like support staff. So um, 2019 was in Cleveland. So Hironori, me and the Czech guys and Vilmos um, all were just kind of running like support staff for me. Um and it was just sort of like, you know, Hironori handled like judges and scoring and all of that. Um, Vilmos was kind of running around doing like bits and pieces of this and that. And and I was kind of like leading the the show um, with the neck with this year's contest in Budapest. Uh, Vilmos, oh, excuse me. Um, Vilmos is the head organizer. And then Hironori and I are both running support staff. Um the question is whether or not it's going to happen. That's the question. Um, that is the <laughs> question. And I mean, I've, I was having a lot of long conversations today with both Vilmos and Hero, and we're just trying to figure out like what's the best option right now, because none of us want to start. We don't want to start selling admission. We don't want to start opening registration. We don't want all that stuff to start because we can't in good faith promise that the contest is going to go on as scheduled as planned. Um, right now we are just kind of looking at all of our options between, you know, whether it's postponing the event, whether it's completely skipping 2020 and bumping Budapest to 2021, whether it's canceling Budapest entirely and just going to the planned Japan contest in 2021, um, you know, and all of those have like different merits and different pitfalls. And what we're just trying to do is we're just trying to figure out like, what's the, What's the most fair thing for the players, first off? Um, what's going to be, you know, ultimately like the best thing for the community? And then what's the best thing for everybody who's already put in, you know, I mean, at this point, Vilmos and his team have already put in over a year's worth of work on this event. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this is, um, I mean, it takes like a full year and a half to put together Worlds. Uh, and mm -hmm. so they've already put together a ton of work. There, there's already been a lot of money laid out for the event. Um, so how do we, how do we move it and not lose a ton of money and a ton of work? Um, and especially, you know, being as small of an organization as we are, like, man, we are just not in a position to take a hit, you know, like we just, and, and like a ton of other like small businesses and small organizations are like, you know, at any given moment, we're one bad hit away from just like completely going down. Um, so we're just trying to figure out like, what's the, what's the best move, you know, to preserve as much of the work and, and capital has been outlaid and what's, what's going to be fair for the players. I mean, we're, since all this started, there's not a day gone by that we haven't been talking about it. So we're really hoping to have like a final definitive answer on like worlds, U.S. nationals, a bunch of other things, like as soon as humanly possible. But I think right now, the only responsible thing that I can say is we're working on it. We do not have a firm answer. Please do not book travel. Please do not book travel. Please do not book travel. So and then we're going to update, you know, as soon as we have like a final definitive, like this is what's going on. We're going to let everybody know as quickly as possible. Do you all have a, a official channel that's best to, to follow along for that? Um, I mean, the website uh, is probably, you know, the most official. I'm trying to remember if it's WYYC 2020. Um, yeah. Uh, WYYC2020.com. And then, of course, the social channels, you know, Facebook and Instagram. Um, I think Instagram is just World Yo Yo Contest. Uh, and I think Facebook is the same. Um, and then we just sort of reskin them every year so that it's the same account. But yeah, I mean, we're, as soon as we have official word, like it's going to be blasted out on the website, all the social channels, we're going to, you know, I'll push it out on Yo-Yo News. We're going to, you know, every single one of us has other interests like, you know, Caribou Lodge and Hironori has Rewind. And I mean, literally every single channel that any of us touch, it's all that information is going to get blasted out like fast. So once the decision has been made, no one will be able to miss it. Right on. Um, 
So I, I think that that's a good point to uh, to wrap up. Uh, you know, I really appreciate your time. Uh, thanks so much, Steve. If people want to follow you, where's a good place to to find you on the, on the web? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Uncle Steve, U N K L E Steve. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at just Steve Brown. Uh, I have a YouTube channel that I haven't posted anything to in forever, although I'm kind of thinking about maybe jumping back on that. What with this whole quarantine shenanigan, um, uh, I might actually start doing some live, like ask me anything Q and a sessions on like Facebook live, uh, or, uh, Instagram live and just kind of see how that goes. So I don't know if people are interested in that, like yell at me and enough people yell at me, I'll totally do it. Right on. Well, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks a lot, Doc. It's always good talking to you.